Collecting and analyzing metadata is incredibly revealing. At a first cursory glance, metadata might not seem to show much except for endless columns and tables of figures, numbers and basic information. But when we take all of this information and we put it together, it generates a very deep and very rich insight into a person's behavior and life. A good example of this can be found in the case of Balthasar Gletli, a Swiss member of parliament. Gletli released half a year's worth of metadata from his telephone and email communications, which had been recorded by the Swiss government in 2013. And once we put all this data together, correlate it, evaluate it and visualize it, Gladly's metadata allows us a very deep insight into his life. The metadata reveals when and with whom he has communicated. It shows every phone call he made or received, every tweet he sent, every text message and email. It furthermore shows his exact geolocation over those six months. Not only which city he was in, but oftentimes the exact neighborhood and street corner. And it shows his network of contacts. It shows how, based purely on the metadata of his phone, who his entire personal environment and networks are, who his family is, who his work colleagues in parliament are, his connections with human rights NGOs and his friends, and it reveals the frequency of those connections through the different size of the dots. Visualizations such as these allow us to understand how powerful metadata actually is in uncovering an individual's pattern of behavior and habits. It reveals an individual's exact locations, activities, communications and networks. The insights that can be gained from metadata are significant. And this is important for a number of reasons. To start with, it helps us put into better context the attempts made by governments in the wake of the Snowden revelations, which sought to minimize public concern about comprehensive data collection. Governments went on the record across the globe, claiming that the level of intrusion was minimal because no one was looking at the content of information, that they were merely collecting the metadata. Take, for instance, President Obama, who in a public statement on the 7th of June 2013 stated that the NSA was not listening to anyone's phone calls. When it comes to telephone calls, nobody is listening to your telephone calls. That's not what this program's about. As was indicated, uh, what uh, the intelligence community is doing is looking at phone numbers and durations of calls. They are not looking at people's names, and they're not looking at content. The hope was to minimize um, a concern about comprehensive data collection by attempting to assure the population that nobody's listening on, in on you know, your intimate phone conversations that you're having with your partner or your friends or so on. Of course, in many cases, uh, that information actually was being collected and stored, although it's true nobody was really listening to that unless they had you know, some type of cause, because it's too much. And you know, you're limited by the human ability to listen to all these phone calls. There are not enough humans to listen to them all. And so the message was, you know, nobody's listening to your phone calls. They're just collecting the information about when and where and how long and who you call, the, so the, the non-content information. And that was meant to minimize concern. Uh, that's disingenuous for two reasons. One, um, the information that can be gleaned about individuals from metadata is quite high level. Uh, and it can be as intrusive or more intrusive than the information that comes from content. So many people started to... Uh, circulate examples of um, uh, what can be learned from people about their metadata. 
well, medical conditions can be learned, um, private infidelities can be learned, uh, even membership in particular organizations can be learned, uh, you know, by who you're talking to, when you're talking to, at what particular times. Uh, but the reason why metadata, the other reason it's disingenuous is because it's the metadata they're interested in. Because the metadata is the data that can be uh, machine read and machine processed, processed and can be subject to automated forms of sense making. The problem with content is that there are certain challenges to making sense out of content, right? So when somebody says something in a telephone call and you're trying to um, determine in an automated way uh, information about this content, automated systems for the moment uh, are not sophisticated enough to discern the difference between things that are sarcastic and humorous and things that are serious. They're not good at figuring out what intent is behind words. They're not good at you know, inferring what people mean. So content is actually uninteresting to machine readable systems unless it can be turned into metadata. All of these machines exercise on metadata. This is what they eat, digest, and then pr and process. Uh, so metadata is their food. Collecting metadata is is going to be what um, surveillance about us is is all about for the foreseeable future. In other words, government responses to the Snowden revelations were deliberately downplaying not only the quality of information that can be gained from just the metadata but also the fact that metadata is precisely the type of information upon which the entire system of automated surveillance and data analysis depends.